Hello class, welcome to lesson 4.4. So today we're going to be talking about proving and applying ASA and AAS congruence criteria. So our uh, central question that we want to address today is how are ASA and AAS used to show that triangles are congruent? And our learning goal for today, our learning goals, are to determine congruent triangles for comparing two angles and one side. All right, so we're gonna explore the angle side angle congruence criteria, also known as ASA. So um, looking at this diagram in front of us, we have uh, an angle, we have an angle EAB. So essentially we have uh, two rays um, and what we wanna do, and this angle is 25 degrees and we know one of the sides, we know that AB is three centimeters. What we wanna ask ourselves is, how many different triangles can be made from this configuration? So basically, if I were to extend a, uh, a side from B somewhere in this triangle, maybe something like this, uh, and I would make a triangle out of this, right? I would end up making a triangle out of this. How many different triangles can be made of a particular type? So let's go ahead and extend this and let's make a 45 degree angle. And so how many different triangles with a 45 degree angle over there can be made, given that we know that this has to be 25 degrees and this ha side has to be three centimeters. Well, the answer to that question is, once an angle in a side has been set, 25 degrees and a three centimeters, there is only one triangle of a very specific angle that can be created. So if I wanted a triangle with this angle being 50 degrees, then I can make one but I can't make another triangle that's 50 degrees. It's gonna be the same exact triangle. Likewise, if I wanna make a triangle that's 45 degrees like I did here, I can only make this triangle. There is no other unique triangle that can be made that is 45 degrees, assuming that we have 25 degrees on this side and this length is three centimeters. And so we have that there's a uniqueness in this triangle and therefore, and uh, this is the uh, angle side angle congruence criteria is that if you have two triangles that look just like this, well, then you know that they have to be congruent. And it's called angle side angle because we have an angle and a side and an angle. And therefore, it's called ASA. So this means if there's another triangle with the same two angles and an included side, this included side is between the angles, then the triangles must be congruent. All right, so let's uh, uh, make this uh, official, the angle side angle congruence criteria theorem. If two angles of one triangle and the included side are congruent to two angles in the included side of another triangle, then that means that the two triangles are congruent. So again, we have uh, two angles that we know are congruent, angle M and angle S, then we have another two corresponding angles that are congruent, in this case, angle N and angle T, and then the included side between those two angles, in this case, uh, line segment the uh, MN and line segment TS, and so then we know that these two triangles have to be congruent by this theorem. All right, so we wanna be able to prove the angle side angle congruence criteria theorem. So if we want, let's, we're gonna try to prove that these two triangles are indeed congruent. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna translate the triangle. So we're gonna try translate MLN and now it'll become M prime, L prime, N prime. And so we moved it so that the two vertices here line up, all right? And what we're gonna do is we're gonna transform these, this triangle so that, it, so that we can use a rigid motion, a series of transformations so that these triangles can overlap. And so first we're moving it so that it lines up to S. And so now S is equal to M prime. And then next, what we're gonna do is we're gonna rotate this. So we're gonna rotate that um, triangle from its original position. And so that the, uh, the, essentially so that the triangles line up at the side ST. And so now S overlaps with M, in this case, M double prime, because we transformed it twice, and T overlaps with N double prime. And so now we have these two triangles kind of lining up and they're like kind of like both halves of some shape. And so now we can actually reflect them. So we're gonna reflect it about line ST across it and flip it. And we can see that when we flip it, they are the same triangle and they overlap. 
And so now L double prime, L triple prime now it's called because we transformed this three times. We translated, we rotated, and then we reflected. And then M triple prime, N triple prime uh, lines up with R, S, and T uh, respectively. And so now we can say that because the transformations used are rigid motions, otherwise known as congruence transformations, we know that the two triangles are congruent. And so therefore, the theorem has been proved. All right, so now let's explore the angle-angle-side congruence criteria theorem, also known as AAS. So we have two triangles in front of us. We know angle B, we know angle A, so we know angle A, angle B, and we know a side, and hence it's called AAS, right? Same here, we have an angle, another angle, and a side, hence AAS. And so is there, on, is there only one unique triangle here? All right, well, let's assume that angle B is 50 degrees, and so therefore it has to be ang the same as angle E. And let's assume that the measure of angle A is 30, and so therefore the measure of angle B is 30. And what's, what's going to be angle C or angle F? Well, because we know that this is a triangle and the triangles have to add up to 180, we can find by the triangle angle sum theorem that to find angle C, we simply have to add 50 and 30 together, and which gives us 80. And then 180 minus 80 is 100 degrees. And so therefore, we know that angle C has to be 100 degrees. And because it's the same triangle, because we know that those other two angles are the same, that must mean that angle F is also 100 degrees. Because it has to add up to 180. It can't be any other angle. And therefore, we know that the triangles are uh, congruent. And therefore, there is only one unique triangle that can be drawn. In this case, just one of these triangles. None of, um, you, you don't have two distinct triangles here. You only have one triangle. Uh, one triangle possibility, rather. And so therefore, these are congruent. So there's only one unique triangle possible, so the triangles must be congruent. All right, so now let's uh, formalize the angle angle side congruence criteria theorem. So if two angles and a non included side of one triangle are congruent, two angles and a non included angle side or side of another triangle, then the two triangles are congruent. So we have two angles and a side corresponding to another set of two angles and a side. And so that's AAS, and therefore, um, these two triangles are congruent. All right, so let's look at uh, an example. State whether each pair of triangles is congruent by SAS, SSS, ASA, or AAS, or if the congruence cannot be determined. All right, so let's look at the uh, pair of triangles on the top left. So we have here, we have an uh, we have an angle, we have a side, and we have another angle, and that corresponds to angle, the side, and an angle. So hence, these two triangles are congruent by. Well, if you look at, oops, uh, I wrote S here. I should have written S, uh, A. So we got ASA. And so these two triangles are congruent by ASA. And then if you look at the pair of triangles on the top left, we have a side, a side, and a side. And similarly, we have a side, side, and a side. So these two triangles are congruent by SSS. And then the uh, bottom left, we have an, we have a, uh, in here, we have an angle, an angle, and a side. We have angle, angle, and a side. So looking at these two triangles, we have AAS. So these are congruent by AAS. Now, if you look at uh, this other triangle, the, the sides are corresponding. You can see that S is directly related to this, uh, this first angle, this angle with the one arc, and then uh, it's directly opposite the angle with the two arcs. So this is definitely congruent by AAS. Then if you look at the 
bottom right um, pair, we have um, we have a side, an angle, and a side. So we have SAS. And if we look at the right triangle, we have a side, a side, and an angle. Or an, so we have a side, side, and an angle. So this is S as A. This is SAS. So therefore, um, they're they're not congruent. So we cannot determine this is congruent at all. Okay. So there is not enough information. So congruence cannot be determined. All right, so uh, let's look at another example. So now we're gonna prove, uh, looking at these two triangles, that FH is congruent to JL. And notice that, if you look at these triangles, we have uh, S, A, or we have, a, we have AAS, right? And so angle, angle, side, and then another angle, angle, side. So we should be able to prove that this is congruent by AAS, and then that's exactly what we're gonna do, okay? So we're gonna essentially uh, prove using AAS that this is true. All right, so we're gonna do our two column chart. Um, and then so our first statements, our first set of statements, remember, are given. So we know that angle F is congruent to angle J, angle G is congruent to angle K, um, and so on, because that is uh, given in the problem. And so um, notice that I shortened angle F and angle J, so um, FGH is the same thing as angle F, and then JKL is the same thing as angle, um, let's see here, uh, K, hold on a second here, so we have KJL, yeah, so uh, angle KJL, so here, I'll, I'll go ahead and, since I didn't, um, I wrote this with shorthand. I'll let you know which one I'm talking. I'm referring to. So this here I'm referring to as angle F, and this here I'm referring to as angle J. So if I'm referring to it with a single letter, what I'm doing is I'm using the vertex. Okay. So the vertex you can label an angle using just the vertex as long as it's uh, it makes sense. So in here I'm using the vertex, and so angle G is right here. This is angle G. The vertex is the middle letter right here and uh, the vertex here so this is going to be angle k okay so this is just shorthand for what i wrote on this statement but in any case this statement is given uh, so that you're always going to start with what's given and then what we're going to do is well we know that these two triangles have to be congruent based on what i just said earlier by aas they have to be congruent right the aas congruence criteria theorem and so we know that they're congruent and so now, based off of that, we know that FH has to be um, congruent to JL. So we know that these, this has to be congruent to this by the CPT um, congruence. So it's CPCTC theorem, okay? And that is that stands for the corresponding parts of congruence triangles are congruent. So that was the uh, theorem that we referred to in the previous lesson, 2.3. And so again, this is shorthand for corresponding parts of triangles are congruent. Okay, so we're gonna be using that shorthand a lot. So CP, CTC, uh, and that basically what that says is that if you, if you have a congruence statement, well then from that congruence statement, you can clearly see that FH is congruent to JL. And so basically, based off of that statement, we know that they have to be congruent, and therefore we use CPCTC. And so now we have proved um, what we set out to prove. All right, so now let's look at a, um, an example with polygons. So a polygon is just a shape with that has sharp corners, right, which we call vertices, connected by these line segments, right? And so uh, in this case, we have four uh, sides and it has to be a closed shape, right? So uh, and what does this have to do with triangles? Well, remember that any polygon can be constructed from a series of triangles So you can think of triangles as being the building blocks to a lot of these polygons, right? And in fact in animation and other things right when you're animating or you're creating a model of something like that in a movie or something they use triangles and you can use you can use a lot of triangles in order to construct a lot of polygons and in order to make 3D models of really interesting stuff, right? Such as what you see in motion uh, motion films and motion pictures. 
But in any case, we want a polygon A, B, C, D to be congruent to a polygon A prime, B prime, C prime, D prime. And so how can we demonstrate that they're both congruent? Well, we can see that the corresponding sides are congruent, the corresponding angles are congruent, but let's talk about it in terms of the triangles. So we can clearly split this into two triangles as such. All right, so we got our two sets of triangles that we can clearly see. And so we know that triangle ABC is congruent to triangle A prime, B prime, C prime by SAS because we have a side, we have an angle, and we have a side, so SAS. Same thing for A prime, B prime, C prime. And so those have to be congruent. And similarly, uh, triangle ACD is congruent to triangle A prime, C prime, D prime because of SAS. We got a side, we got an angle, and we got a side. And so based off of the theorem, we know that they're congruent. And because we can, since these triangles are congruent, there is a ridge in motion that's going to be able to map one to the other. So I can transform this to this, and it's going to be the same thing. I can just translate it, right, in this case, and uh, they'll overlap. And so, um, and because they, the triangles share the same side, we know that they're going to uh, map in the same way. And so, therefore, the two polygons are going to be congruent. Now there could be a little bit of work done to prove that D is going to match up with D prime, but you know I just want to kind of generalize this to say they they will map together, and you know based off of the theorems that we discussed, you know it should be fine, and perfectly saying that these are congruent. All right, so now let's look at an example with the congruent polygons. So now we know that we can demonstrate that two polygons are congruent um, using what we know about triangles, but here they actually told us that the two polygons here are congruent. And so what is the value of x? So we know that ABCD is congruent to EFGH, which means that we can construct a congruent statement, right? We can say that AD is congruent to EH. And so that's gonna be the congruent statement that I'm gonna use. So this is, so line segment AD is congruent to line segment EH, which means that the length of AD, the distance from A to D, is equal to the length of EH, the distance from E to H. And so those two things are equal. So basically saying that this is congruent to this. And so 9 has to equal 2x minus 3. So these guys are equal. So we're going to go ahead and set them equal to each other. So we have 2x minus 3 equals 9. Now we're going to add 3 to both sides. We're just solving for x here now. 2x equals 12, divided by 2 on both sides, and we're left that x is equal to 6, right? So we got the value of x. And if you notice, if I plug that in here, right, I get 2 times 6 minus 3, which is 12 minus 3, which is 9. So it does end up checking out. All right, so now we're going to include some congruent triangle examples. So now we have two triangles, and how do we know that they're congruent? Well, we can use one of our theorems to, that, to demonstrate this. We know that we have an angle, we have an angle, and we have a side. And we know that these two sides are congruent, nine and nine. So they're the same measure, the angles are congruent, so angle, angle, side. So these two triangles are congruent by AAS, all right? And so because they're congruent, we know that the corresponding parts must match, which means that QP has to be congruent to BA or AB is congruent to QP. All right, so we'll go ahead and, and just write down. We know that triangle ABC is congruent to triangle PQR, which means that AB, which I'm referring to, you know, the AB here, is equal to PQ. And so that's our equation. So now we know that X plus four is AB and PQ is seven. So then X has to be three because three plus four is seven. All right, guys, that is it for the lesson. I uh, hope you learned something from this video. And as usual, I'll see you in the next one.